Hello and welcome to another EstablishTheRun.com screencast. My name is Adam Levitan. I'm one of the co-founders here at ETR. And today, as promised, I'll be reviewing the winning lineup of the Week 15 contest on DraftKings. I'll also be reviewing one of my two GPP lineups from this contest. While you're here, be sure to hit subscribe and to click that notification bell. That way, you'll know when we put new videos up. And by the way, videos obviously on YouTube are always free. And, and once the off-season hits, we plan to start posting a lot of videos on here on coaching change impact, on the NFL draft, on free agency, on OTA season, etc., etc. Everything you need to get fully prepared for the regular season. But as for today, the goal, of course, is to talk about some strategies for DFS tournaments, try to learn from some winning lineups, and just to get better at DFS tournaments. So let's get into it. The Establish the Run Fantasy Football Contest on DraftKings in Week 15 was 3,000 entries, $3 buy-in, and two entries max, rake-free on this contest, thanks to our friend, our friends at DraftKings. A quick look at the payout structure here. Always important to look at this. Very flat at the top. But note that 5500 out of the $9,000 prize pool went to spots 1 through 10, the top 10 spots. 61% of the money went to the top 10 spots. And there's really no money in finishing, you know, outside the top 15. It's all pretty similar. So our strategy in this should shift a bit. You know, we're going for the top. We're trying to get all the way to the top, to the top of the mountain. We still want to have some solid floors in all our plays, but we're willing to take on some thinner usage situations, some more boomer bust situations, some more highly correlated and therefore higher variance constructions. We're willing to take that stuff on because the difference between finishing, say, 81st and 9,000th is only $8. So let's get to it. The winner of this week's contest was... Wicklizek and his stack was Patrick Mahomes to Tyreek Hill and Sammy Watkins. And this was actually one of my favorite stacks uh, for tournaments all week. But then on Sunday morning, we see all that snow and not just flurries, you know, not just a dusting, but legit accumulation as much as six inches. And, and, you know, it's so tough to project or to predict how outcomes will be affected by weather. I almost always lean on the side of not changing a projection for weather, but in this case, I thought Mahomes' attempts and explosive plays were both in jeopardy due to the snow. So I, you know, like many others, as you see by the ownership percentages, came off this stack. Mahomes, 3%, Tyreek Hill, 4.7%, Semi Watkins, 0.6% owned. Uh, Wiklizek also played Chiefs defense here, which is actually a mistake uh, from a correlation standpoint. In other words, you want your defense slash special teams to score touchdowns, to get pick sixes, special teams touchdowns, etc. But when that stuff happens, it's really bad for Mahomes in the pass game. They don't get the ball. The Chiefs get a bigger lead. You know, potentially fewer pass attempts for Mahomes. But anyways, Wicklizek at running back went Christian McCaffrey. And Christian McCaffrey only 20% owned. You know, really low for someone with his floor ceiling combo on a week where we had a ton a ton of good cheap options. You know, there were a lot of options you could make a case for below 5K this week. Then he also played Kenyon Drake. And this was obviously the difference, you know. Uh, of course, Kenyon Drake makes perfect sense as a price pivot off Patrick Laird. And we talked about it on our Friday night show on Establish the Run. You know, Kenyon Drake had a similar touch projection to Patrick Laird, but one guy is at home. That's Drake. One guy isn't on one of the NFL's all-time worst teams. That's Drake. One guy isn't like a fifth stringer. That's Laird. You know, one guy is a legit NFL talent. That's Drake. And, and Drake was only $500 more. So Drake at 9.1% owned versus Patrick Laird, who was 26.2% owned. In hindsight, obviously, obviously a no-brainer. Another big key to this lineup was Prashad Perriman. You know, with Mike Evans out, we knew that Perriman would be the number two wideout, which is for the Bucks, which is just an incredibly valuable fantasy football spot. Jameis Winston projects on really any time Jameis Winston plays he projects to be among the slate's leaders in pass attempts. Jameis Winston has been in the top two in average depth of target in two straight years. You know, he doesn't throw to tight ends and running backs very much. It's just a perfect recipe for wide receivers. Perriman, great play, great matchup, only 5% owned. And then Higby and Conley, you know, who were uh, straight cash plays and totally fine. Again, 
you know, we have high owned plays in these winning lineups like Higby and Conley and Christian McCaffrey. We just need to balance it out. Like Wick, like Wickazek, Wicklizek did here. Average cumulative ownership of 12.4%. Strong. All right, let's go to 371st place. And that is me, your humble narrator, Adam Levitan. So my favorite GPP play of the week, all week, was the Bucks pass game, you know, by a wide margin. There were concerns all week about Jameis Winston's thumb. But if you followed it closely, the Bucks were never worried. You know, they had a plan to progress him through, and he threw tennis balls on Thursday, and everybody freaked out. That was all just part of the plan. And so I thought he was totally fine and totally healthy. So I thought he'd be under-owned because of that thumb worry, considering it was a dome game. You know, Lions just an atrocious defense. And as I just mentioned, Jameis Winston fits the profile of a truly elite fantasy quarterback. So I was happy to get him at 7.1% owned here. And then I also really like the Lions. You know, you remove Marvin Jones, who was injured. You remove TJ Hawkinson, who went down a few weeks ago. We can more accurately project where the targets will go. So I went with a game stack here. Winston to his clear, no doubt, number one receiver now that Mike Evans is done. And Chris Godwin. Also Justin Watson. And then on the other side, I had Kenny Galladay and Danny Amendola. You know, the two, no doubt, top passing options on the other side. The hope with these game stacks which are very highly correlated, but also very high variance. The hope is that there's a ton of passing, which inflates play volume. The hope is that neither defense can stop the other one's pass game and we get an aggressive, you know, back and forth game with a lot of clock stoppages, a ton of plays. And it works to some degree. You know, Jameis was unreal, 458 passing yards, four touchdowns. Problem was, it just wasn't ideal from a run out perspective. You know, I thought Justin Watson had a good chance to outperform Brashad Perriman. I was brutally wrong. And that was probably a mistake considering we knew Perriman's role. We were speculating on Justin Watson's role with Scotty Miller back. You know, and it was, you know, also a bad run out for me because Chris Godwin pulled his hamstring midway through the third quarter, didn't come back. And also the Lions scored two rushing TDs with Wes Hills. You know, David Blau was not very good, which is obviously a risk, but, you know, two rushing TDs against the Bucks is not something you expect. I expected their touchdowns more likely to come through the air to Galladay or Amendola. But I think the idea here uh, was still strong with this game stack. Then I filled the lineup out with Saquon Barkley and Giants defense. Um, Really like the correlation there with, I thought, two underpriced assets against the Dolphins at home. And then Chalk Higby, uh, who I thought was the best tight end play on the slate, really close between him and Zach Ertz and Ian Thomas. But I thought Price considered Higby uh, was the best one. And then I played the, the running back that fit. You know, I, there were a bunch of running backs that I liked on this slate. Gurley's ended up fitting, and I was totally fine with that because if you're paying attention to Gurley's usage lately, you knew he had a chance to handle literally 100% of their running back touches at Dallas, and that's what happened. So I think a solid lineup here, but only min cashed. You know, um, a good reminder that GPPs are, are, are very hard. Um, you know, 371st place out of 500 for, for $5. Just a reminder, GPPs are very hard and you need a lot to go your way, but hopefully we keep making good lineups. We keep putting ourselves in position to get to the top. All right, thanks for checking out this review. Feel free to drop any comments or questions below. And a reminder that we will be doing our full content at EstablishTheRun.com through the Super Bowl. Use promo code ETR20 for 20% off any weekly or monthly purchase right now. We'll drop a link in the description below. So, for my dog Jerry, I am Adam. Good luck, everybody.